You are watching one of the most important moments in the NBA this season. Down by three, 10.2 seconds left. LaMelo! Yes! With the guts of a cat burglar, we're tied at 97! Then in overtime, down one. LaMelo, off the screen, downhill, the kick. Miller for three, no good! Brick. In this game, LaMelo Ball would tie a career high with 38 points, but it didn't matter. The Hornets still lost. For the season, LaMelo currently ranks fourth in the NBA in points per game with 29.9, a massive leap up from last year's 23.9, as LaMelo is making a league high 4.9 threes a game. Throughout NBA history, there have only been four players in their fifth seasons who have averaged at least 28 points, six assists, and four rebounds per game. Oscar Robertson, Luka Doncic, LeBron James, James and Michael Jordan. After two years of injury, year five LaMelo is on pace to join this historic list end. He's doing this after he already signed a max contract. The man has already been paid. So clearly the desire to be one of the game's all time best is still in him, which means really the question is, is LaMelo Ball a future NBA superstar? Have two years of injuries and playing on one of the worst franchises to ever exist. I'm sorry Hornets, but we're going to get into that caused us to forget that at one point in time, a lot of people saw LaMelo Ball as the future of basketball. Is that future superstardom still coming? A tough question, but we're getting to the answer. So what's up, Mike here? And right away, I do think we need to focus on the fact that as a young prospect in this league, LaMelo Ball has proven to be among elite company on the stat sheet. Here's a list of every player who has averaged at least 18 points, six assists, and four rebounds per game in their first four seasons. LaMelo is here and his hard stats are better than a lot of Hall of Famers at this point in his career. The problem is, on this list of 15 players, only Cade Cunningham ranks lower than LaMelo in terms of win shares. So are these empty stats that are meaningless, or are the Hornets just that bad and LaMelo is facing the consequences? Well, Charlotte hasn't made the playoffs since 2016. They have never, as a franchise, reached the Eastern Conference Finals, and they have not been out of the first round since 2002. When it comes to their team history, as a whole. The Hornets all-time leaders in win shares are Kemba Walker number one, Gerald Wallace two, Muggsy Bogues three, Larry Johnson four, and Del Curry, Steph Curry's dad, number five. Del was a great shooter. It's concerning that he ranks fifth on this list ahead of Cody Zeller. The Hornets have also been terrible recently. They had just 27 wins in 2023 and 21 in 2024. However, in 2022, when LaMelo made the all-star team in just his second season, Charlotte did win 43 three games as hype began to build around a young, mellow-centered team until we had the horrendous Miles Bridges situation, combined with LaMelo's injuries, which sent the Hornets back to the bottom of the East, where they seemingly have belonged. But really, Hornets fans are not going to mind their terrible history if LaMelo Ball is a top five player in this league in the future. If he is really a superstar, you can build a franchise around. The Hornets believe he is. They gave him the deal of a franchise star. There is no denying that this current Hornets roster is awful. 39-year-old Taj Gibson has already started five games for the Hornets this season. 34-year-old Seth Curry has started four. Right now, of course, LaMelo Ball ranks first in the Hornets in scoring. What's notable is that 22-year-old Brandon Miller is second on this team in scoring. Miller has shown flashes of potential, but with 15.7 points per game on 37.4% shooting from the field, you'd be hard-pressed to find a worse second scorer in the league. Currently, that's not to say anything about Brandon Miller. Miller's potential. I am just emphasizing how awful this roster is. Even Miles Bridges, who was once seen as LaMelo's wingman, is shooting less than 40% from the field in general and less than 50% from two. There is one clear bright spot here, and that is LaMelo Ball. His on-court stats show us that for the 2025 season so far, when LaMelo is playing, the Hornets have an offensive rating of 112.8 and an effective field goal percentage of 53.6%, which means theoretically, if LaMelo was on the court at all times. The Hornets would rank tied for 
for 16th in the NBA in offensive rating and 20th in effective field goal percentage, which is, of course, not even good. But without LaMelo, this team resembles the Washington Generals. When LaMelo is not on the court, the Hornets have an offensive rating of 100.3, which would rank dead last in the NBA behind Portland by a noticeable margin. And also, if you took LaMelo off of this roster, does this team win 10 games is a good question. With that said, I have a question for you. When did Steph Curry make his first all-star team? The answer, his fifth season. Yes, despite the fact that Steph did play three years in college at Davidson, it was not until year five that Steph made the all-star team, but then in year six, he was an MVP and a champion. Now you may be immediately thinking, whoa, Mike, calm down. LaMelo Ball is not Steph Curry. But how do we know how good LaMelo Ball is on such a terrible team? We need to remember that at one point in time, even the Warriors were not convinced that Steph Curry was a future star. Due to nagging ankle problems, Steph Curry only played in 26 games in his third season, and he averaged just 14.7 points per game in 28.2 minutes per game during that year. Those are not the numbers of a future all-time generational talent. And because of this, Golden State was able to sign Steph to a dirt cheap deal. Four years, $44 million, which even at that point in time was $16 million less than the max contract he could have signed. Bleacher Report called this deal at the time the steal of the century. Oh wait, the headline here was Stephen Curry contract extension is risky business for the Golden State Warriors. This article even said it's a little surprising the Warriors couldn't get Curry for less than they did. No one, except maybe Steph himself, saw his rise to absolute superstardom coming. Even his dad did not believe that Steph would be this good. This cheap extension allowed Golden State to take on Kevin Durant's salary, giving them one of the best teams the NBA has ever seen, the 2017 Warriors, who won 67 games and in the playoffs went 16-1 and with their only loss coming to LeBron James and the Cavaliers in the finals. In his fourth season when Steph Curry was on the court, the Golden State Warriors had an offensive rating of 108.5 and an effective field goal percentage of 51.6%, which would have ranked them seventh in the NBA in both categories if Steph was always playing. Without Steph, their offensive rating fell to 100.4, their effective field goal percentage fell to 47.3%, which would have been good for 29th as a team in the NBA in offensive rating in 2013, and 27th in effective field goal percentage. Steph's impact on the offensive end was a sign of things to come. As for LaMelo, he unfortunately, again, is playing on such a bad roster that it's hard to fully see. Defensively, we have to note that the Hornets have also got gotten worse while LaMelo is on the court. We need to be fair. We need a clear picture here. So I dug and the same held true for Steph in year four as well. And what's interesting here is that in LaMelo's second season, when he made the all-star team, when he was surrounded by much better talent, the Hornets not only won their 43 games, but also LaMelo on the defensive end only caused the Hornets to play slightly worse defensively according to on-off court stats. Now these on-off court stats are heavily influenced at times by the lineup that you're always playing with. Year two LaMelo has shown us that a team can win with LaMelo running the show. Imagine now averaging around 30 points per game if he was locked in on a team that actually had a chance to do something. It's here where I really believe that comparing LaMelo to the rest of his draft class is important. Because when we do this, one thing is clear. Anthony Edwards has taken a massive lead in this draft due to his playoff success, though Ant has had the benefit of playing with veteran talent such as Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert, while LaMelo has had no one comparable in his basketball life. Last year, he was playing with Gordon Hayward. The best he's seen is Terry Rozier. Not only does LaMelo compare well to Anthony Edwards, he in fact clearly compares well to the other top three players in this draft. Looking at LaMelo Ball's first four seasons compared to Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, and Tyrese Maxey, we see that yes, in terms of points per game, rebounds per game, and assists per game, LaMelo stands right there with three three of the brightest young players in the league, two of which just played for Team USA. The biggest difference between the four of them is that LaMelo has had a DeMarcus Cousins-like king situation where management has currently failed to bring in new talent around him. While Anthony Edwards joined a team that had Carl Anthony Towns on it, Tyrese Halliburton has had an incredible front office and Tyrese Maxey had Joel Embiid on his roster as a rookie. Digging even deeper into these stats, we also see that while Tyrese Halliburton has been the clear 
clear standout on this list. Lamelo actually has a higher box score plus minus than both Ant and Maxi so far, and his VORP ranks ahead of Maxi and slightly below Ant's. As for the 2020 class as a whole, there is no question, Lamelo is a standout. What the question is, is will he continue to put up 30 point per game numbers? Will he continue to grow as a player into that? I think the answer can be found in Lamelo's past. As the youngest of the three famed Ball brothers, Lamelo first hit everyone's basketball radars as a 13 year old. And when he was supposed to be an eighth grader, he was instead starting on Chino Hills, the undefeated number one high school team in America in 2016. After that season, Lamelo's brother, Lonzo, would go on to become the number two pick in the draft by the Los Angeles Lakers, as in college at UCLA, Lonzo was an all American star. The problem came when Leangelo Ball went to UCLA got caught shoplifting in China, was luckily let go, but decided to quit the team after shoplifting, which meant LeVar Ball needed a new team for his son, Leangelo, to play on, and he grouped his youngest son, LaMelo, into that team. As a young player in high school, LaMelo Ball was a five-star phenom. Then, before his junior season, his dad pulled him out of school and had him playing professional basketball in Lithuania. At that point in time, LaMelo went from a five-star recruit to off of many scouts' radars and was projected to be a second-round pick at best, with many saying that he would never play in the NBA. That is where LaMelo was at one point in time, not even projected to play in the league. When Melo took his career back into his own hands as a high school senior, he would re-emerge in the national spotlight. He became a five-star prospect again, and then he chose not to play in college, but instead played in the best professional basketball league in Australia, the NBL, where he showed the entire world when everyone doubts him, that is his fuel. Lamelo, in the two years leading up to the draft, went from a projected second round to undrafted player to the number three overall pick in the draft in a second year all-star. When he finally gets a Good team around him. I think the pattern will repeat itself. People doubted him, people forgot him, but then rise to stardom and win games as he always has. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video like it. And right now in the top left corner, I think you're really going to like this video on Anthony Edwards and the current state of three point shooting in the NBA. In the top right corner is a video that YouTube is specifically choosing for you. I think you'll like that one as well.